Hello grade 11 students, in this video we're going to be going over bond energy, bond strength, bond length and bond order. This video carries on from the previous video in this playlist where we looked at the potential energy versus internuclear distance graph. Very important to watch that video if you haven't yet, but let's jump right into this video and remember to subscribe for more videos like this. In the previous video, we had a look at this graph over here. This graph is very important in the context of bond energy, bond length, and bond strength. So if you missed that video, go check out the links in the description box below or up here. But very briefly, when you see the decrease in potential energy, you can see that this is potential energy, the, the y-axis, and then the x-axis is internuclear distance. So if you see this very big or sharp decrease in potential energy, at the bottom here, that represents where the bond is formed. So this decrease in potential energy of the system represents the bond energy. And this is the energy that is released when the covalent bond is formed over here. So we can read off the potential energy. It says negative 432 kilojoules per mole. So we know that the bond energy is 432 kilojoules per mole. The amount of energy released when the bond is formed is the amount of energy required to be taken in to break that same bond. And when the bond is formed over here, where potential energy is at its lowest, where you got a stable molecule, that over there is the bond length, 74 picometers. And it says your internuclear distance. That means that the distance between the two nuclei is 74 picometers when the bond is formed. And bond energy, which again, it's the amount of energy that is released when a bond is formed, that bond energy relates to the strength of the bond. So more energy is released when a stronger bond is formed and more energy is required to break a stronger bond. So that's what it says over there. More energy is released when a strong bond is formed. If we release, if we are creating a weaker bond, less energy is released. So more energy is released when a stronger bond is formed than when a weaker bond is formed or more energy is needed to break a stronger bond than a weaker bond. And the thing is, stronger bonds are more stable. They're not as reactive as weaker bonds. And that makes sense. Stronger bond, more stable. We've also got over here, it says that bond strength depends on the bond length, which we also spoke about in the context of the graph. And it says here, the shorter the bond length, the stronger the bond. Again, that is something that make, makes logical sense. I'll show you in a second. And the bond strength also depends on the size of the atoms combining. Smaller atoms can move closer together. They form a shorter bond because they can get closer together, which means a stronger bond. The unit for bond energy is kilojoules per mole. Kilojoules, as you should know, is a unit that represents energy. Joules is energy. Kilojoules is therefore also energy. Per mole, you should know about moles. And it fits with the definition. So it says the amount of energy absorbed to break a specific bond in one mole of covalently bonded gas molecules. That is the definition that you have to learn. And that is why the unit is kilojoules per mole. And you can see on the graph over here, the unit is kilojoules per mole. Then looking at bond length, the definition is the average distance between the atomic nuclei. The nuclei are the nucleus, the center of the atom. So it's the average distance between the atomic nuclei of atoms that are covalently bonded with each other. And remember, the covalent bond takes place over here where the potential energy is at a minimum. So over here, that is where the covalent bond is formed. And we can read off the bond length as being 74 picometers. So it says that it's the average distance between the nuclei, atomic nuclei. So if this is one atom, this is another atom. Here's the nucleus here. Here's the nucleus here. The bond length is that distance over there. And it's generally measured in picometers. In the previous video, we discussed to convert from picometers to meters, you times 10 to the negative 12, okay? And it says here that each covalent bond has a particular bond energy and a particular bond length. This, as it says, this will be different for each covalently bonded molecule. If there's a very strong force of attraction between atoms, um, that means that they have a very big difference in electronegativity. So they're really, really, really attracted to each other. They bond covalently. R think about it logically. If they're very, very attracted to each other, they move very close to each other. And the bond length is very short. If they don't have a very strong force of attraction, they won't move as close to each other. Therefore, their bond length will be bigger. They'll be further apart. And it also makes logical sense that the smaller the atoms are, 
the closer they can get to each other. So the shorter the bond length, which makes for a stronger bond. So all of these things are connected. You see an inverse relationship. If we have a shorter bond length, it means stronger bond, which means higher bond energy. Remember, bond energy and bond strength directly related. Shorter bond, higher bond energy, because stronger bond. So those two things are inversely proportional. And here are nice diagrams to illustrate this with what we call the halides or the halogens. So as you should know, the halogens um, are found on the periodic table. They are the column that's next to the noble gases. So the noble gases are the far right column. Then the halogens are in the column next to them. And halogens include fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And you can see here, they are represented by the little colored atoms over here. So F, Cl, Br, and I. And as you can see, as you move down the periodic table, what happens? Well, here are the halogens. As you move down the periodic table, they get bigger. Okay, the atoms get bigger. So fluorine is the smallest of the halogens. Then we get bigger when we go to chlorine, bigger when we go to bromine, and the biggest when we get to iodine. And think about what impact the size has on bond length. Well, the bigger the atoms get, so here is iodine, it's very big compared to fluorine, which is the smallest. The bigger the atoms get, it's not so easy for them to get close to each other. So they're a bit further apart from each other, which means their bond length is longer, longer bond length. Compare that to fluorine, which is the smallest out of the halogens, because they're smaller. These atoms, so fluorine and hydrogen, they can get closer to each other, so they have a shorter bond length, and that ultimately means a stronger bond or higher bond energy. And that's why it says bond length is directly proportional to the sizes of the atoms in a particular bond. The bigger the atoms, the longer the bond length. And bond length is also dependent on bond order, which we haven't discussed yet, but bond order. Bond order basically just tells us if we're dealing with a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. So your bond order is one if there's a single bond existing between the atoms, two if it's a double bond, three, it's a triple bond. So it says the higher the bond order, the stronger the bond, that makes sense. Triple bond seems like it would be stronger than a single bond. And the stronger the bond, the higher the bond, bond order, stronger the bond, shorter the bond length. Think about if you, very, if you have a very, very strong bond, then you pull close, close, close to each other, very, very short bond length, more bond energy. So here we've got two atoms, X and X, just pretend it's some unknown atoms, X and X, single bond, double bond, triple bond. So the bond order is increasing as we're going this way. This one has the highest bond order, triple bond, therefore shortest bond length, therefore strongest bond, highest bond energy. Here's another comparison that we can do. So they're comparing single bond, double bond, triple bond. Obviously bond order is increasing and look at bond length. Bond length is decreasing, which means that this bond over here, this will be the strongest bond, highest bond energy. So if we had to answer this question over here, Bond length is the average distance between the nuclei of two bonded atoms. And if you had to answer this question over here, they give you that graph that we spoke about in the previous video, and they want us to choose bond length and bond energy. This is the distance between the nuclei. So this here, the lowest point on the graph, that distance over there, that would correspond to the bond length. So it's either option B or C so far. We can eliminate option A and option D. And then we've got this value over here, which would correspond to the bond energy. So our answer is option C. I hope that's been helpful. Click the links in the description box below for more chemistry videos like this. Subscribe for more, and I can't wait to see you in another video very, very soon. Bye, everyone.